are going to Washington, D.C., and we are going to drain the swamp. Let's swamp them. When we win tomorrow, we are going to drain the swamp. The president said that again and again in the campaign. Now that he's made it to Washington, not quite working out that way all the time. Well, it's tough. The swamp is deep and thick. We're going to bring in Dan Bongino, former NYPD officer, former Secret Service agent, and host of the Dan Bongino Show. First of all, Dan, your take, I mean, listen, he's been, he's been fighting the swamp. The swamp delivers him a budget. He wants to veto it. He doesn't. He's supporting the military. What's your take? You know, Pete, listen, I was disappointed yesterday. I, I support this president. I think he's done some tremendous things. The tax cuts, uh, the, the move towards deregulation and cover, uh, cutting government red tape. Um, those have been really tremendous moves, especially for a first-year presidency. But I think we have to be candid. Yesterday was a disaster. Um, there was a golden opportunity at that press conference to take that bill, walk up to that podium, mm. Pete, throw it up in the air and say, you're all yeah. fired, I'm vetoing this damn thing, <laughs> and you better get back to the drawing board. I mean, it would have been yeah. an epic move that would have just, the grassroots would have went wild uh, with elation. And, you know, he signed it, which, uh, you know, I'll, let's, I hope he's, tr he's true to his word, though, and he says this is the last but time Dan, he's going to But, Dan, his like Achilles' that. heel is the DOD, is the military, is the troops. He wants them funded, and you've got to understand that as well. Uh, no, of course. Listen, it was obviously we need to rebuild our military. Um, it, it is not we were shuttering. Uh, our, our equipment is, is falling apart. I, I get it. I understand that. And I understand his loyalty to our war fighters, Pete. But, you know, we're going bankrupt. And the uh, military is not going to matter if we have no money in the future. This is the most predictable financial crisis in yeah. human history. And, and by, one more thing. I'm sorry. I don't mean to drone on on this, but shame on Congress and the Senate, too. Let's not just put the blame on Trump here. He was put in a box by them. What about Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and these others? I mean, can they not do simple math? Yeah. Guys, there's no money. Yeah. There is no money left. Yeah. Stop spending money we don't have. There's none left. Well, Dan, it's you, pathetic. You're angry. I think you speak for so many Americans today that are frustrated with the process, but are frustrated with the spending. It is out of control. All right. Well, let's bring in Michelle Malkin, of course, host of the Michelle Malkin Investigates on CRTV. Michelle, always good to see you. Great to see you too, Abby. I want to just give you my congratulations Aww. as well. It's great to see your face back on the channel, but I will tell you that there is no more rewarding, satisfying, and challenging job that you will ever have than, than as motherhood. And I will tell you, as a, as a, as a mom of a 17-year-old now who's uh, <laughs> going to be graduating from high school, it's, it is an incredible journey. So congrats. It means the world coming for you. And I will say, it makes you more passionate about issues that are going on in this country. You're thinking about your own kids now, so I understand that. And I now I'll get why you're so passionate about things you believe in and I want you to talk about yes. one of those sanctuary cities the movement seems to be spreading Huntington Beach in California might follow Los Alamitos suit in uh, challenging California sanctuary city law where do you see this going what are your thoughts well, I think that among many responsible uh, law enforcement officials, police chiefs, and mayors of cities and counties in California that do not agree with the hijacking of that state by open border zealots, uh, that they have a responsibility and they realize it. They all took oaths of office to uphold the Constitution and the laws of this country. And so I think, in essence, the anti-sanctuary movement that we're now seeing that was spurred on by uh, the lawsuit by the DOJ and the position of our president very strongly uh, opposing the uh, basically the abdication of responsibility by Cal California officials. I think that this uh, movement constitutes a, a real effort by some of, of these responsible leaders to make California sane again. Now, whether, <laughs> whether it's too late, I think, is the question. But re remember that we're talking about three pieces of legislation that have undermined the safety of Californians and, and by extension the rest of us. The first one dealing with undermining worksite enforcement uh, by private employers, which is outrageous. The second one dealing with detention uh, and the inability to share information among local and state officials with federal ICE agents, which mm -hmm. as we know, this channel has reported time and time again about the bloody consequences of sanctuary policies. And the third one uh, having to do with uh, the uh, 
uh, the actual release dates of so-called removable aliens and being able to give that information to the Fed so that they can pick people up before they're released. And, of course, I have reported many yeah. times over the years about these catch-and-release policies that have had deadly, deadly mm -hmm. effects. Well said, Michelle. Well, while we're on the topic of California and insanity, I've got to get your, topic, get your take on this topic. Parents are outraged there. After Planned Parenthood got invited to a middle school mental health fair, uh, presumably to provide information, talk to us about the mindset of, of a school that would say Planned Parenthood and what they provide is welcome at a middle school. So, yes, this is Clifton Middle School in Monrovia, California. And apparently the superintendent has reported to parents that, uh, that, the, that they didn't know. The school district didn't know that the Planned Parenthood was going uh, to, to show up. And uh, I think that the bottom line here, of course, is that the lack of transparency and disclosure is an outrage. Uh, and the idea of Planned Parenthood showing up at a science fair when they lie all the time about what they actually do do within the walls of their clinics? Will there also be equal time for crisis pregnancy centers to, to share information about, for example, the science of ultrasound and what actually is happening in the development of unborn life? You've got a death lobby that is funded by federal tax dollars. You want to blame someone? How about this omnibus bill that gives $500 million to subsidize Planned Parenthood's activities and Title, title 10 grants uh, as well? I think that a lot of the ire should be directed at Congress as much as the local school district in this case. Yeah, Michelle, on that point, are you disappointed the president signed the omnibus when there's the funding you talk about, federal funding for Planned Parenthood, as well as, by the way, the bill does not cut off funding for sanctuary cities as promised? That's exactly right. I'm beyond disappointed. I'm disgusted. Mm. I'm disgusted with the so-called GOP leadership. This falls squarely on the shoulders of Paul Ryan uh, and Mitch McConnell. It is business as usual. People need to open up their eyes about how these appropriations bills and every piece of legislation that passes uh, ram down our throats with any, out any consideration of transparency and true deliberation by so-called deliberative bodies. Yeah. Well, your uh, anger speaks for a lot of American people waking up this morning. Michelle. Sounds like we should send you to Capitol Hill. You might want to, uh, I wouldn't want to be in a meeting with you and Speaker Ryan. I think a lot of people would vote for uh, Michelle Malkin. That's true. Michelle, yes, thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, I would drain the swamp. Thanks. <laughs> we have no doubt about With her bare hands. Yeah. Thank you. The House of Representatives passed a massive $1.3 trillion spending bill today intended to prevent a government shutdown. The Senate will likely follow suit. It's being shepherded by Republicans, but you would be forgiven for not knowing that. The bill caps ICE agents we can hire and the number of illegal aliens ICE can detain. A border wall is out of the picture. It gives hundreds of millions to Planned Parenthood. It funds sanctuary cities. It ups the EPA's budget by more than $750 million. It's not something Republicans said they were for. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky joins us now. Senator, we asked uh, over a dozen Republicans who voted for this to come on. None would do it. Um, the people who wrote this, were they here for the 2016 election? You know, I'm kind of old school. I think you ought to read the bills, you know, before we vote on them. This is a 2,200-page bill. We got it last night at midnight. I've been working all day diligently through the bill, and I'm up to page 600. But, you know, I've still got quite a bit of ways to go to read the bill. As far as the content of the bill, this could have been written by President Obama and liberal Democrats. When I ran in 2010, when we had that Tea Party tidal wave, we were opposed to President Obama's spending, and we were opposed to President Obama's trillion-dollar deficits. This bill will give us a trillion-dollar deficit this year. Paul Ryan uh, is, of course, ultimately responsible for this as the head Republican in the House. D I mean, these are his priorities, I assume, but they're so out of whack with the parties of the, uh, the priorities of the party. How? I think I think this is why people are so upset with politics because when the Republicans are out of power, when they're in the minority, they are the conservative party. But then when they get in the majority, there is no conservative party. Democrats don't care about spending any of the time. Republicans seem to care about it when they're criticizing Democrats. But now that Republicans are in charge, Republicans are like, Katie, bar the door. You talked about border security. I'm I'm flipping through the pages today, reading the bill, I find out there is money for border security in Tunisia, in Jordan. We have border security money in the Middle East, but not border security money for the U.S. So I'm just concluding that the people who run the Republican Party in the House anyway just don't want increased border security. 
No, what it is is this. It's an unholy alliance. The unholy alliance between Republicans and Democrats is this. Republicans are not fiscally conservative on the military. They want unlimited spending on the military. Right. Democrats say, we'll give it to you. We're not really opposed to it. We'll give you the military spending if you give us the domestic spending. So really the unholy alliance, the unholy compromise has been going on for decades is we really actually have too much compromise in Washington. Of They're course. always compromising to raise spending and increase the debt. Really quick, are you going to stop this? You're going to shut down the government over this? You know, it's never been my goal to shut down government, but my goal is to say that we should be for balanced budgets, limited spending, less debt, and we should be for reading the bills. So I'll continue to advocate that. Whether they, they can roll over me, I'm in the minority. There'll be about 10 Republicans that vote, maybe 15 Republicans vote no on this in the Senate. Maybe a handful of Democrats. Yeah. But they will win. The, the majority will win. But it's Republicans and Democrats joining hands together to blow a hole in the debt. I know you're going back up the hill.